Hi, this is Bart Polson, and this video is for Behavioral Science 3010 Statistics for the Behavioral Sciences at Utah Valley University. In this video, we're going to be looking at the questions and answers to the pretest for Chapter 5, which is about z scores. The first question is When a distribution of raw scores is converted to z scores, the shape of the distributions, well, it's a flattens out to a uniform distribution, B approaches a normal distribution, C is unpredictable, or D remains the same. The answer to this is D. It remains the same. Um, if a, a uniform distribution is totally flat across the top and changing the z-scores does nothing to the shape, uh, it also it doesn't approach a normal distribution. That's something that you talk about with the central limit theorem when you're taking a sampling distribution, but that's a, that's a different thing. And it's not unpredictable. It stays exactly the same. Here's here's how it works. Um, what I'm showing you here is a, is a box plots to depict a distribution that's extremely skewed. And you see on the top, it's labeled times, and we got this box that's way down at the bottom, and we got a couple of dots, and we got one dot that's way out there at 700. The chart below it is the exact same data, except this time it's been standardized. It's been converted to z-scores. And we did that by, this is the number of times people say they log into their social media per week. We take each person's times and subtract the, the mean of the times and divide by the standard deviation of times. That's the formula for a z-score. And you see, it looks exactly the same. It just has different numbers across the bottom. And that's what it is. Uh, going to a z-score is simply converting to a different metric. It only changes the numbers on the bottom. Number two, when a distribution of raw scores is converted to z-scores, the mean and the standard deviation of the distribution will be A, the same as they were before, B, different but unpredictable, C, a mean of zero and a standard deviation of one, or D, a mean of one and a standard deviation of zero. The answer is C, a mean of zero and a standard deviation of one. Now, the same as they were before is true for the shape of the distribution when it's converted, but it's not true for the... Uh, the statistics, because those have to do with the way the numbers are written across the bottom. Different but unpredictable? No, they're they're very predictable. And th that bottom one, mean of one, a standard deviation of zero. Now, I'll just say this: if it had a standard deviation of zero, that would mean that every score was exactly the same. Uh, there'd be no variation whatsoever, and that's not the case. Um, let's take a look at this. What I have here is uh, two very simple distributions. It's the same distribution twice, actually. Of just six scores represented by boxes. And um, on the top one, it's written in the original uh, raw scores of x. It's counting from 0 to 6. The mean is 3, and the standard deviation is 2. Um, beneath that, you see the same distribution, except now the mean is written as 0. And that's the balance point. And that the standard deviation, the same distance, is now goes to plus 1. It's 1 standard deviation, the z-score is. And that's what happens. Uh, no matter what the distribution looks like, the mean of a, z of a distribution of z-scores will always be 0, and its standard deviation will always be 1. Okay, number 3. If a person has a z-score of 1 on a test, then their z-score is A, the same as it was before, B, the only score in the distribution, that is, it's a sample size or an N of 1, C, one standard deviation above the mean, uh, or D, one point above the raw score mean? Well, the answer is one standard deviation above the mean. Again, the same as it was before is true for the shape of a distribution when it's converted to a z-score. The only distribution in the score, n of one, uh, well, that's a case study. That's just like a whole different thing. We don't even deal with that. And this one idea, this thing down here, one point above the raw score mean, that would be a deviation score of one, uh, but not but the z-score is not in deviations, it's in standard deviations. Um, and here's, you know, how it works. It's because of the z-score formula. You see that each person's z-score, the top part here, it says how far away are they from the mean, that's x minus x bar, that's how far away are they from the mean, divided by the standard deviation. So it puts it in terms of standard deviations. So if a person has a z-score of positive 1, it means they're one z-score above the mean. All right, number four, what percent of the normal distribution is within one standard deviation of the mean? That is the absolute value of z. That's what those vertical bars mean. It's an absolute value. The absolute value of z is less than one. Uh, another way to write it is it goes from negative one to zero to positive one. And the uh, choices are A, cannot be calculated without additional information, B, 1%, C, 68%, or D, 99.7%. 
The answer is 68%. Let's just take a look at how that works. Um, oh, by the way, this calculated without cannot be calculated without additional information. That would be true if we did not know the shape of the distribution. But a normal distribution has a very specific shape, and so we don't have to know much. Um, if we have z-scores and we know it's a normal distribution, we have everything we need to know in order to get uh, proportions of the distribution. Anyhow, it works like this. Here's a normal distribution, which is a bell curve, and you see that right there in the middle is the mean, and then one standard deviation above has 34.13%, and one standard deviation below blocks off another 34.13%. So round those off to 34, uh, and take those two 34s, add them up, and you get 68%. So about two-thirds of the entire distribution which, don't forget, is an infinite and asymptotic distribution. It goes on forever in each direction, but two-thirds of the total area of the distribution is within one standard deviation below and above of the mean. All right, last one. If a distribution has a mean of 50 and a standard deviation of 5, then a raw score of 68 would have a z-score of what? Uh, first, cannot be calculated, or it's 18, or it's minus 18, or it's 3.6. Well, let's take a look. The answer is 3.6, but let me show you how the formula works. The formula requires that we get the, we take the person's score, we subtract the mean, that the M there stands for the mean, and that's because uh, it's hard for me to insert symbols in this presentation. And, and again, the, the American Psychological Association prefers that we use a capital M for the mean and a capital ST for the standard deviation, so that just makes it easier. So to get a Z-score, we get a person's score, we subtract the mean, that's the called the deviation, and then we divide it by the standard uh, deviation. And what we get in this case is they have a score of 68, so we take that and subtract the mean of 50, and divide by the standard deviation of 5. 68 minus 50 is 18, divide that by 5, and we get 3.6, and that's our answer for question number 5. Anyhow, that's it for the pretest, and I look forward to seeing you for the first post-test. Thanks.